Hello, this is Christopher DeLay. So we're moving on to a new topic with this video. So what I'm going to cover is basically removing deprecated uh, certification authorities from Active Directory. So what does that mean exactly? Well, so there are, if you have a Microsoft PKI in your enterprise, there are components of it which are published Active Directory, specifically the configuration partition of Active Directory. Sometimes you may, like, there may be a CA that uh, you no longer want to use, and so parts of that still remain in Active Directory, and you have to go through and clean them up even if you've uninstalled the CA service from a server. Now, just like a, a kind of like a caution, cautionary note. So what I'm going to cover is how to remove this from Active Directory, but this is not something you want to do unless you're 100% sure that you no longer want to use the CA and that none of the certificates issued by the CA are currently in use. Because if they are, there are still certificates that were um, issued by that CA still in use, then deleting them can cause problems as uh, certificate validation will have issues because potentially the AIA and CDP locations are no longer available. So again, just if you're going to do this, just make sure 100% that you're no longer using that CA anymore and you rarely do just want to clean it up from Active Directory. So as mentioned, uh, the, the uh, PKI objects are stored in the configuration partition of Active Directory. And so that's really where we just need to go through and remove them from. So there's various tools you can use. You can use ADSI Edit. I'm sure there's some way you could do it with PowerShell. But the easiest way to do that is with uh, PKI View. So on my CA, I have launched PKI View. And so if you really, if you want to run that in your environment, it is just, you can just open the, uh, command prompt or run or whatever you want to do and then you can just do pkiview.msc and that will go ahead and launch it. It will be installed by default on your CAs. Um, if you want to use it on a different machine you just need to install the ADCS uh, remote server administration tool then you'll be able to do that. So here's pkiview. Normally we use this tool to view like the status of our um, PKI, of our certificate authorities. So here I have three different CAs in this environment. Now, my environment, this really isn't what you would call up to like enterprise standards or even best practice standards as I don't have like a root CA and then subordinate underneath. It's basically a kind of like a quick lab for me to do testing in. So all my CAs are enterprise root CAs, which means not only are they issuing certificates, but they're also the uh, root CA. So keep that in mind. So normally you go through and click on here and see if your AIA and CDP locations are available. That's one of the things that you can kind of do through this tool. There are some other options you can do. So you can you can manage templates from here. You can bring up the CA console by um, right clicking on the CA and do manage CA. But for this, we just want to go through and my goal here is to get rid of CA01 and CA02 and remove them from Active Directory so they no longer show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on Enterprise PKI. And also before I launch this, just one last note. You're going to need to be Enterprise Admin to do these activities because since these objects are stored in the configuration partition of Active Directory, uh, you do need that permission to delete those. So I'm going to go here and do uh, Manage AD Containers. So this is going to bring up all the different containers in the configuration partition that are related to PKI. So the only one I want to keep for around is the fourth coffee CA04. So everything else I'm going to go ahead and remove. So I guess the, the next question before I delete these is like if I delete these, how do I get them back? Well, generally if you do regular um, system state backups of Active Directory, then you can definitely use that to do an authoritative restore of these objects. Okay, with all that being said, let's get this cleaned up. So I'm just gonna, it's just pretty simple. Just go through and click remove for all these items that are related to the two uh, CAs that I no longer want in the environment. And I'm just going to go through and pretty much click yes. If you're doing this in a production environment, this might be a little bit nerve-wracking because you 
might be afraid that you're going to break something and that's why I'm pretty much saying that it's key that these CAs are no longer in use. If you are not 100% sure that they're not in use then you might you probably want to keep these things around until you verify that they aren't. So the NTO certificates that's uh, where CAs that are trusted for things like smart card log on are stored so I removed it from here. AIA container this is where the CA certificates can be retrieved during the chain building process so if you have a multi-tier PKI some of the intermediate CAs can be pulled from here. CDP container this is where the CRL distribution points are it's one place that you can potentially store them. Not everybody uses LDAP for uh, CDPs. Uh, the best practice is to use like a HTTP web server that's load balanced for high availability for that sort of purpose. But you can still use LDAP and there may be things that are still published in LDAP. So you still need to get rid of these things. Okay, just gonna continue deleting. Some of these it's asking whether there's a container that these are stored in Active Directory, so when you first publish them, there's a container that's created, so it keeps asking me if I want to remove the whole container, which I do. KRA, this is where the public key for key archivals uh, stored. Uh, certification authorities, so this is where all your root CAs are published to Active Directory. So if you have like two tier PKIs where you have like a root and then an issuing CA, then you won't see the issuing CA in here, you just see the root. So this one is apparently an older one that I had had in my environment before, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well. And then go through and remove these. It really, it wants to make sure I'm really, really sure I wanna get rid of it apparently. And then we have the enrollment services container. So this is enrollment services container is an object in Active Directory. It's used during enrollment. These there's an attribute called certificate templates on each of these objects, and that's how the enrollee finds out which CAs host different templates. So this is CAs that show up in here definitely are going to show up in Enterprise PKI because that's where it's looking for kind of like active uh, CAs. So normally, if you uninstall certificate services using Server Manager, it will use the one the one object it will remove from Active Directory is the enrollment services container. It'll leave the other ones behind, especially like AIA and CDP and those sorts of things, because they may still be needed if the CA has been removed, but you're still using the certificates from that CA. So again, I'm going to go ahead and continue to remove these, and this is the last one. And click yes and OK. And then let me go ahead and refresh PKI. So I should only see my one remaining CA show up here. And that is the case. Now just remember all the deletions I did there, they were an active directory change. So I didn't need to be enterprise administrator. And those changes will, of course, have to replicate throughout your environment. So depending on your convergence time of Active Directory, that may pay, potentially you know, take 15, 30, 45 minutes, whatever your convergence time is for Active Directory. So that concludes this video. This is how you can remove CAs from Active Directory if you're no longer using them. And again, the key thing is here just to, I know I'm like a broken record repeating this, but just want you to be really careful that you do not um, remove CAs that are being used. If you're especially concerned about being able to restore, then you want to take an Active Directory uh, backup before you do this. But if you have an Active Directory backup, you can, you know, of course, restore these things back from your uh, system state backup with an authoritative restore. So last thing I want to cover is, I've been talking about this because I've been working on my new blog. So my old blog was at TechNet. Um, TechNet blogs are kind of in deprecated in terms that us Microsoft employees can no longer post to them, but they are uh, archived. So especially, I think, I don't know whether they automatically archived. I think one of my colleagues requested that my blog got archived. So thanks uh, Rob for doing that. But those blogs are archived, so they're still accessible at that URL. The new blog I'm working on is at x.509.blog. And I have my information there for contacting me. You can contact me through the contact page there. 
Again, I am on other social media platforms, but I'm trying to get in the habit of checking those every day before I kind of send those out there because I'd hate for folks to try to reach out to me and I'm not paying attention. So uh, more videos to come in the next couple of days and thank you for watching.